For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another edition of the Focus program. We are very glad that you are a law. Uh, beginning of September already, isn't it just amazing how this year is going along? And we are glad, as I said, that you are here. Very interesting show. Uh, Oliver is coming to town. We're going to meet some of the cast there. Then the St. Clair uh, Library uh, System is celebrating its 100th anniversary. We're going to talk to the executive director of the library uh, system, uh, Allison Arnold. And then, uh, finally, uh, we are going to have uh, some folks on uh, that you're going to be interested in too. So let's begin with Aaron Smith from the Riverbank Theater. Hi, Paul. Nice to see you. Welcome nice back to, to the Focus Show. Thank you. You had a summer group of, of kids which were involved in the Riverbank Performing Arts Academy. Yes, sir. And talk to me about that and then we'll allude then we'll go and see who these guys are. All right, sounds good. Well, we had an awesome summer at Riverbank Theater this year. Um, we had four summer camps. Four of them? Four of them, okay. yes. One for high school. We did a play called Hello Shakespeare. And we did three weeks of Aladdin, Disney's Aladdin. We did uh, three separate camps, 60 kids in each camp, wow. roughly. And uh, it was fantastic. Where we did you draw them from? All around here, up as north as Port Huron, down to the New Baltimore area, even as some from Bloomfield Hills, is wow. from what I understand. So, um, so they, the maybe they have the grandparents is, up the, here, but the, the word, word is getting, getting out. Yes, it is. The word is getting out. So we were pretty much full to capacity this summer, and um, we couldn't be more thrilled. Okay. So we are wanting to train up the next generation of. Uh, young performers and uh, put them to work on our stage, which is what we're doing with Oliver. <laughs> so, so Oliver uh, is, a, is made up of a cast of young people. It's a great old play by the name of uh, Oliver Twist is one of these two Oliver characters. Oliver Twist, yes. And it's a musical for, for uh, people age uh, eight and up, right? Yes. It's probably not suitable for real young ones, but, you know, about second, third grade, they'll probably come and, and really enjoy it. Yes, Charles Dickens wrote the book back in the 1800s and our story takes place in the 1800s and we have about 14 um, students from our Riverbank Performing Arts Academy who are being featured in the show. Two of them are sitting next to me right here. Okay. And we also have about 14 adults who are also in the show as various It's a musical. Characters. It is. Uh, lots of numbers? Lots of songs, Very yes. And they're, they're songs that people probably sing in, in everyday life, consider yourself, it's a fine life. and yeah. Some, I'd do anything. But you don't realize that but they're But you don't from. realize they're from Oliver until you're sitting in the theater and you go, oh, that's from this show? And it is. Okay. So. Well, without further ado, let's meet the two characters. Which one of you is Oliver Twist? <gasps> Oliver, <laughs> nice to meet you. Paul Bingaman's my name. You are not the nine-year-old orphan. You are Brian Martin, right? Yep, I am. Tell me about Brian Martin. Who's he? Well, he likes to sing and dance and he loves to act. No kidding. Yeah. I, can, I can see it coming across the top of the table here. Um, he, get, he does well in school. Good. Well Where school. do you go to school? I go to school at Marysville Middle School. Okay. And what grade would you be in? I'm in eighth. And that you're just starting eighth grade? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you went to the Riverbank uh, Performing Arts Academy. What, what did you like out of that? I was just a lot of fun. Like I got to meet some new friends, some new kids. Um, Who'd you play in a I played uh, Iago. Okay. Yeah. Who's Iago? Iago was the bird, the, um, the, parrot. the parrot. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god. Was your first time as a parrot? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and you enjoyed that, eh? Oh, uh, yeah. So in, in Oliver, talk to me about your role in, in this play. Well, Oliver is kind of like the sweet, well, you can view him as either like a sweet, innocent kid or kind of a suck up to people and like he, he just he just wants a home okay he just wants somewhere to live someone to love him how do you like the numbers in it the musical numbers oh they're a lot of fun the dancing is it's not hard but it's not easy either it's okay it's intense all right and sitting next to you is uh, noah carlson and you are playing artful dodger yes. what's that role about well he's 
one of the main pickpockets in Fagin's crew. He's <laughs> kind of the cream of the crop in terms of it. He's a bad guy in terms of the law, but he's really a likable character in the show. You were in the uh, Riverbank Arts Academy this summer, too? What yes, did you do this summer? What kind of roles did you play? I was, well, really, I only did the Riverbank Theater, and I was Aladdin in the Aladdin production. Have you been in other performances in other places? Uh, not since I was really little. And that was the Jungle Book, but I was... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where do you old. go to school? I go to school with Brian at Marysville. Okay. Marysville's taking over the <laughs> Marine City stage. That's great. How about the play? How many numbers do you uh, perform in? I do Consider Yourself. I do I do a lot of them, except yeah. for Um Papa and kind of a lot of the adult ones. But I'm really in the main orphan slash pickpocket cast. Mm -hmm. So what uh, do you like uh, this kind of a play? As pro maybe you haven't been in a drama yet. but. Uh, no, haven't been no. had that opportunity? No, not you yet. You think you'd like to be in musicals mainly? Yeah. Okay. And I understand right after you do this interview, you're going to piano practices. <laughs> do, you, yeah. do you have other instruments you play besides uh, piano? I play the trumpet in band class. So you like music? Yes, a lot. How about you? I play the piano and the French horn. Oh, my God. You guys are really talented, really talented. Well, you've got uh, a good... Good cast here, I can tell. Very good When cast. is the play? And uh, I know it starts September 15th, goes through October 1. What, uh, when are the performances? That kind of good stuff. It's pretty much Friday, Saturday, Sundays. We have a, a couple of Thursday night performances as well. Um, I think one Saturday matinee in the mix there, September 15th through October 1st. You can get your tickets at riverbanktheater.com or you can call our box office. I think the number is 810-278-1749. Very good. And all tickets are 26 bucks. All tickets are 26 And there's not bucks. a bad seat. Not a bad seat. And um, if I could, real quick, I'd love to plug uh, our fall workshop series yes. that the Performing Arts Academy is doing. Please do. Um, starting October 7th, for grades 3 through 12, we're doing a musical theater workshop on Saturdays from 11 to 1. Cost is $200, and we're going to be doing the show Magic Treehouse Pirates Past Noon. And it's a very fun That's show. That's a long title. It is a long Give title. Give me that title it's again. Ma Magic, Magic Tree Treehouse, Pirates Past Noon. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's based on, on the book. Okay. And there's a series of books called the Magic Treehouse books, and we stumbled across them and really liked it. And it's going to be a fun little show we're going to do. And it's educational. We'll, we'll be learning about singing, basics of singing and acting techniques and dance techniques. And also, we're going to be having our Snug Bug series again on Wednesday. So that's for kindergartners through second graders. That's down at the Snug, hence like the name, it. the Snug Bugs. I like it. And we're going to be doing some singing and some poems and just get them uh, started, get young. Them started young. And, and it's a very non-threatening way to, to get your child involved. So give us a call and, and uh, uh, coming something up, for everybody. Uh, next at the Riverbank is a Maritime Concert, and that's on October yep, the 7th. Storm. It's called Storm. On Storm. Okay, yep. I'll say that. Storm. Mm -hmm. And then Moon Over Buffalo in uh, October, November. Yes. Very funny. A nice fall. Straight play, yes. And then you get into some wonderful Christmas uh, performances. Yes, we're going to be doing the best Christmas pageant ever. And we're having auditions for that on September 24th. It's a Sunday night at 6.30 for kids and 7.30 for adults. So come on out and join the fun. Lots of stuff happening. Oliver, any final words before you, before you get hit the stage again? Anything, um, anything about please. the play that you really like you want to tell the audience? Please, sir, I want some more. <laughs> <laughs> How about you there, Artful Dodger? Come sit yourself well in. You guys have got it down. <laughs> Aaron, you did a good job of training. <laughs> oh, thanks, Paul. We're, we'll be right back with our next guest right after this. One of the uh, really active organizations in uh, St. Clark County is St. Clark County Community Mental Health. Their executive director is along today with a friend by the name of Amy Smith. But Deb Johnson, welcome back. Amy, nice Thank you, to Paul. see you. Thank you, Paul. Hey, Paul. You guys are busy, busy, busy. You have are double teaming me today with double amount of the information. So let's start with, De with Debbie. Right, we hope you have time for all this great information. I do, great whatever information. you need. Okay, well, September is a lot of things. Yes. It is, um, it's National Recovery Month. It is Childhood Obesity Awareness Month. It is Fruits and Veggies 
Matter more month. Um, <laughs> Fruit and it, veggie matter more month. Yeah, more that's, matters actually, more matters. The more you eat, the better it is. Um, cholesterol education, um, gum care month, and prostate health month, and suicide prevention awareness month. And so that is why I invited Amy Smith to come along because I consider her our agency expert on uh, suicide prevention awareness right. issues. And, um, and so she's going to talk a little bit about that. And then I want to talk about some of the other things okay. that we have, um, including rolling into the very first week of October because I won't be here before the first week. Okay. And there's some important things that week. It's Mental Illness Awareness Week. Okay. But we could start with um, Was suicide. With Amy? Yeah, let's start with Ms. Amy. Ms. Amy, welcome back. Thank you, Paul. The walk that you are doing, 5K, is how many years old now? How many? Well, it's three years as our walk to remember, walk to prevent. However, it was five years known as out of the darkness. Right, so right. So if you did all of them, You've it's been doing eight it for a long time. years. Yes, it is. Yep. Marvelous. And okay. it is so supportive of people. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, suicide, most people don't realize that suicide actually is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States of all ages. That's amazing. It is. It really is. And then, but it's the second leading cause of death for kids 10 to 24. That's staggering. That's that even is, more that startling. That is. Yeah. More, so that's why it's so important to do suicide. Say that one again. It is the second leading cause of death for all children in the United States from 10 to 24. So... Medical issues. More than yep. car accidents, more than everything. Mm -hmm. Second standard. leading cause. It is. And in St. Clair County, not last year, but a number of few years ago, we had a real high incident of uh, suicide in that age group, didn't we? We have, yes. Over the, the years. Over the years. Goes it's up, goes down. St. Clair County averages 24 deaths of suicide a year. That's one every two weeks. Oh. One every two weeks a person dies by suicide. Now, with that, then you're right. Various years, we've had more youth than others. But this year alone, we've had two. We've had two youth, 18 and under, who have died by suicide. Last year, there were two. And does it tie to the drug problem? I mean, is it, do they use the drugs to, to cause suicide, or is that two different seven? Two separate? different topics. Seems okay. Two yeah. different topics. And I think that's why it's so important that people understand what there is no reason or why, no one set reason or why people do it. It's usually a lot of variables, but we know that approximately 90% of people have some kind of a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. Whether it's diagnosed or not, whether it's treated or not, is, is all part of that it. That commit suicide. That, that die by suicide, yeah. yes. That die by suicide. Yes, and, and we say die by suicide typically because you commit sins, you commit crimes, um, death by suicide is, in that arena, they don't see it as a sin. They see it as so much emotional pain mm -hmm. that, I just want you to get know, rid of it. exactly, and they don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a very ambiguous, or, um, what's the word I want to say? Um, they're really conflicted, you know, because the emotional pain is so great, but then once they make that decision, then they feel so much better. So there's a lot of signs and symptoms that we want to educate people to look for because it, in most cases it is preventable. People okay. just don't know what to look for. You're having a run. When's so, the run? Walk. Where is it? No, nope. it it's is a walk. It's walk. a walk. It's a walk. Well, it if I is. Run. Yeah, some people can <laughs> you run. You can run. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is um, Octo Sunday, October 8th. Okay. And it's at East China Park. It's called our Walk Number Two Remember for people who are survivors and the opportunity to celebrate the life of the loved one they lost, as well as um, walk to prevent, so that it's, we have resources, okay. we have things available for people who may be struggling, don't know where to go, what are local resources, who do you call, how do you help someone who's struggling? So that's why um, it's called that. So it's Sunday, October 8th, East China Park. Registration is at 11. The walk starts at noon after a real short ceremony and a balloon launch. And we mentioned this um, earlier when we were talking about this, but um, uh, Pastor Max will be there on okay. sets, and he does a fabulous job um, talking. Um, we were saying he he has a gift for seeming to find the right words all the time, and um, and especially for situations that is like, a gift for this. It, it, is. A, it, it truly is a gift, and um, and really meaningful words. So he will be there too, mm -hmm. and it's a great event. Is there a cost to it? There is not a cost. It is free. Okay. Um, people can register. We have 
um, families who create teams, donations. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. love to have mm -hmm. donations because then those money we put back into our prevention efforts as well as to help support our survivors of suicide support group. Um, so $20 donation, you get a t-shirt. Uh, rain, sneet, sleet, snow, doesn't stop you? It doesn't stop us. Nope. Neither do the honeybees. We've had those one year that they were, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were pretty so, bad. <laughs> so, um, yes, it's, um, it's an event that, because a lot of times people who are survivors feel isolated. Yes. They don't know what to do. And so there, it's a great opportunity that you're not alone. Sometimes they describe uh, uh, suicide as a very selfish kind of act. Right. That you don't think about the people that are left behind. Right. And, and, and all the work that I've done with survivors, it's not. That's just kind of a myth. Oh, okay. Just like if you talk about suicide to someone, then you've planted the ideas. That's, That's not true a myth, either. too. Okay. Right. Okay. Very so good. we need to talk about it. We need to educate it. We need to help people who are struggling. Okay. I've connect been with services. Around. I've been straight. Yep. Yep. October so, the 8th. October uh, the 8th. Noon at East China Park, beautiful East China Park. It's a beautiful and environment for that. And it is free. If you want to make a donation, we would love that. People can go online and register at www.walk2, um, remember, um, dot myevent.com. Okay. It's a long one, but a good one. And if they forget it, call CMH. Call me and Matt we will, Yep. We'll, we'll hook you up. Tell them how to yep. Do it. All right, so, young lady, what else have you got? Well, I mentioned it's National Recovery Month, so every September, and actually I think this is the 27th year, um, SAMHSA, which is the Federal Organization, Substance Abuse Mental Health Services, Services Administration out of Washington, um, they designate September as um, Recovery Month. And uh, the purpose of that is to increase awareness and understanding about, about people who have um, mental health and substance use disorders and celebrate the people who can and do recover. So we want, you know, we really want to talk about that, that people, people can recover. And especially when it, um, we talk about substance abuse, we know that um, the opioid epidemic is, it's an epidemic in the country, in St. Clair County, in the state of Michigan. You know, there's task force. So actually the governor, lieutenant governor is going to sit on a task force at this, at, 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 for Michigan. Um, uh, there's going to be a local task force, Dr. Mergentant's heading up, um, and uh, groups. But anyways, what we want people to know is people do can recover from substance use disorders. We see it all the time at Community Mental Health. Okay. Um, actually, I just saw one of the billboards up in town about that, about trying to uh, get started on your recovery if you have a problem with uh, substances. But anyway, so that's that's uh, this this month, and now so we're trying to recognize folks. So um, also, um, it's uh, I mentioned. Uh, well, I'm not going to go into those months. Let me talk about something else. Um, th with this month is our. Um, our art show for community mental health. It started. It started actually uh, today, although this is not probably airing today, September seventh. But it runs all month long. September twenty seventh is the last day, um, and it will be at Studio twelve nineteen downtown. And it highlights the artwork of people who receive mental health services, and uh, and it shows people shows the community, um, you know, the how, the talents of the individuals that we serve. Um, that people. It, it just demonstrates even further that they're multifaceted, multi-dimensional people. They're, 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 our old slogan used to be, they're not their mental illness. They're not, they're many other things. Um, so that is there and there'll be a lot of great artwork. So we hope people okay. will stop by and see that. Um, we also have um, our the NAMI walk. Uh, NAMI is the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. Um, it's the 14th annual Walk of the Minds. It is at Belle Isle Park Saturday. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we it send is. a team down there. Um, most counties send teams and there's people from all over the state that um, go to that. Um, and uh, it will be Saturday, September 23rd. And uh, and if people want information about that, there's actually there's a NAMI website. You can just if you Google at NAMI or in Michigan NAMI, um, you will find all that information. So that would be good. Um, and then I want to talk about a few things that are happening in October because the very first week of October is um, Mental Illness Awareness Week. And I'll leave this stuff with you. But on Tuesday, October 3rd, we have what we call the Celebration of Recovery because um, we select individuals who have done a great job um, in, in their recovery and uh, they're living a life of recovery. Um, they've received services from us, but they may be still receiving some level of services, but that doesn't really matter. The point is they've worked hard on their recovery. They're doing a great job and we want to recognize them for that. We also like to recognize um, some of our staff who we think have done an especially great job of helping support people in their recovery. So that's a free event to the public. It's from 4 to 5.30 at our main office in Port Huron, 3111 Electric Avenue. And that's on Tuesday, October 3rd. 
Wednesday, we have a really big event going on. Um, we hope lots of people will come to it um, at the Sperry Movie House. Yeah, downtown great Port Huron. Um, we are going to be um, showing the movie No Letting Go. Oh. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, a professional production um, that highlights childhood mental illness. And it's a true story. Um, and the mother of the, the, the young man that is um, portrayed in here, who has bipolar disorder, his mother, Randy Silverman, is the CEO and co-founder of the Youth Mental Health Project. And she is going to be in Port Huron at a uh, pre-reception or recep oh. reception before the movie at 6 o'clock on the dinner level at Sperry's. Mm -hmm. So there'll be um, lots of nice hors d'oeuvres. And, uh, and she'll be there and she'll, be, she'll speak for about 20 to 30 minutes about the importance of the advocating for children mental health issues. And then um, the movie starts at 7 o'clock. So if you want to come to both things, which we hope people will, because it's going to be great. And she is a great speaker. She's, a, she's a, definitely an awesome advocate. And um, you, you'll, people will enjoy that, I think, um, and learn a lot. Um, yes, $25 for, the, for all the appetizers. And then that includes the movie. If you just want to come to the movie, $6. Oh. If there is somebody that really wants to be at that movie and can't afford it, they should contact us. Yeah. And we will, we will have some scholarships Scholarship. available. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then on Thursday, um, October 5th, is National Depression Screening Day. So that day, we partner with McLaren Port Huron. We'll be doing depression screening for anybody who wants busy, them. Busy, busy place. At, um, at SC4 yeah. um, in Port Huron. So um, any, that'll happen all day, 9 to 4, at the SC4 Student Center. And uh, so if people want us to do that, we will help them with that. Okay. So that's a lot of the things that are going on. I've got one over here, which is pink. It's a pink out. What's this all about? Well, that is, is uh, I, I don't know if it's a first for St. Clair during volleyball season, but um, St. Clair High School is partnering with Marine City High School. Um, and we kind of put on their, you know, their rivals on the court, but they are teammates for a cure. And um, they're going to together play um, a volley their volleyball match. It's a scheduled match that they have anyways. But um, both teams will be wearing pink. Um, oh, beautiful. Doing some things to raise funds for um, cancer support programs in our community. The proceeds will be divided between the three Looks local. Looks like there's going to be two matches. Yep. JV at five, the varsity at six. But it starts at four because if you want to come get a pink hair extension because October oh. is Breast <laughs> Cancer Awareness yes. Month. A um, lot of, lot of um, people have the pink hair extensions. Um, you can get that put in. Um, there will be um, a lot of cancer resource ma materials for people to take. There'll be basket raffles and a 50-50 raffle. There'll be a very short presentation um, between the JV and the varsity game. Probably announce raffle winners too. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be a great night. Um, it actually was the varsity players idea. And we saw Marine City um, coach and players at a tournament talk to them and they were all about it. And, um, and so we're looking forward to it. Beautiful. All right, that is uh, September the 28th, and it starts at 4 o'clock at, at St. Clair High School. So, uh, and if people, there's going to be fan shirts, but they have to be pre-ordered. So if people want the really cool fan shirts, um, they're, only, the school. they're only $10. Contact the school. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, I'll probably throw it out on my Facebook because um, there's a link. You can order, order them online from 4Sports, okay. so, or they can contact 4Sports. Right, very good. Yeah. October the uh, 8th October the uh, at 8th. noon at uh, East China Park, the yep. uh, uh, walk, uh, suicide prevention walk, if hope, I get it right. Hope to see you there. Yeah, very good. Do we miss anything? I don't think so. I you think ladies we are always full of wonderful information, well, helpful information you. to the community. We thank you so much for everything you do. Thanks for having Thanks. us, Paul. Coming up next, there's a anniversary, 100th anniversary of the uh, St. Clair County Library System. We'll hear all about what their celebration is in just a second. One of the great services we've had for numbers of years, in fact, a hundred years, is the St. Clair Library System. Joining us today, talk about their 100th anniversary, the executive director of the library system, Allison Arnold. Nice Very to nice see you. Welcome too. back to Focus Set. Yep. And community relations man par excellence, Mr. Mike Mercantile. Welcome Thank back, you, folks. Happy anniversary. Thank you very Happy much. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Golly, it's, gee, it's here. Yes. You've been doing lots of stuff all year long, and it's uh, you're coming. When is it finally the day? Is it, have we passed well, the official day? The St. Clair County Library System was formed in December of 1917. So oh. we've decided to, we had decided that we were going to take the entire year yes. and celebrate all year. Because That's only right. 
because yes, we, you only get to do this 100th birthday once right. in a lifetime. So uh, we thought we would let the community celebrate with us um, for the entire year. Um, however, we are having a um, 100th anniversary celebration um, for the entire system on September 29th, which is a Friday, from 4 until 8 p.m. at the convention center. Um, we are hoping to have um, a good crowd. It's free. Oh, wonderful. Um, there that's will be. Important word. That's right. It's free. <laughs> there will be food and drink. We hope to have some dignitaries there uh, visiting us and speaking about the, the wonderful uh, place that libraries hold in, in a community's heart, as well as a, a special guest speaker, Ms. Terry McMillan, author of um, Mama and Waiting to Exhale, and former library page. Is she at the really? Saint she Cook, really? Yes, at the Port Huron Library. She grew up in Port Huron and she worked as a page. So it's kind of a And what did the pages home. do? They put the books away and made okay. sure that you were able to find them. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. And that was an inspiration for her to, to get later in life to become a writer. Well, we hope so. We hope that uh, being surrounded by that yeah. much literature helped yeah. her to find her way, yep. That's yep. marvelous. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna throw up a slide on the back screen here. And I think you were, uh, alluded to the uh, to the September, uh, is this the one you were talking Correct. about? Correct, yep, September 29th at 4 p.m., yep, yep. At the Blue, Blue Water Convention Center, Terry McMillan, yes. uh, the music, and uh, state librarian Randy Riley, and uh, it's just going to be a nice event. Yes, I, I really hope so. I think that um, anybody who's interested in helping us kind of bait, bait the library um, to come out and have some fun with us because okay. that's what we're it's come as you are it's a casual yes, it's a casual, casual. Affair, okay so good. what's our next slide there fellas Let's see. Are you coming there we go and there's terry, yeah, there's terry. those are all her books and of course people are very familiar with uh, stella got her groove back and a lot of those made, were made into movies weren't oh, they yeah. yes yes and so. she will also be signing books for us there too so if you happen to have your your very loved dog-eared copy, bring it along okay. and she'll sign it. And right. if you don't, uh, Barnes & Noble's gonna be there to sell copies of books okay. too. So she, she's going to do a reading or? I'm uh, not exactly sure. She's gonna make some surprise remarks. us. She's yes. gonna surprise yeah. you. Yeah. Next, yeah. next picture. And that's, the music. That's the jazz trio. That's a Philip J. Hale jazz trio. They come out of Detroit. They're pretty famous jazz musicians down there they play they gig all over the place in the city that's a little so. bigger guitar than yours yeah a little bit a little lower sounding too <laughs> <laughs> he probably plays it better than i do too <laughs> they're coming to us uh, through a, a partial grant as well so they're coming out as part of the arts council um to, yeah. oh great um, to yeah. Help yeah. Out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. all right what do we got next oh okay a party yes. another party september the 30th what's this yes. one about Saturday, the day after our big uh, celebration, we are going to have Maine Library's birthday party. All of the branches have hosted a birthday party um, in honor of our 100th anniversary. And um, our friends of the library for Maine Library have helped us with this program. And we're going to just have a, a lot of fun in a circus type venue. We're going to have um, um, performers, we'll have um, a musical act. And then we'll have some activities like yard games and that sort oh, great. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, and that's right there, that, that first one right there, if you, I think if you go to the next slide, you'll get a photo of the taco oh. drummers. These guys are fantastic. Look at them. I mean, Look they, at those. That they, and they play with that kind of energy. They, they were there at the library this winter, I think, and knocked the ceiling tiles down because those I was drums were just Literally, hanging. probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, they're, they, they, so the old adage, shh, it's the library. Yeah, it's not no, going to no, happen. No, no. Not at all. This is going to be outside. This is going to be <laughs> great. And, yeah. and they have a lot of audience participation. That you can bang the drums and everything to go along with it. And they, they just put on a really super energetic okay. show. Nick, what do we got now? Oh, look. These are, this this is the Bacchanal Productions. Um, they're out of Detroit, and they have a lot of kind of sideshow uh, side acts and things like that. So we thought that'd be really cool. Yeah. They've got an aerialist that does kind of Cirque du Soleil kind of things like that. And if you go to the next one, there's fire oh. eating and things like that. So yeah. I mean, they, they, it's a wide variety. Of Some of the old books there that you. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah you yeah. got to recycle them yeah. somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they'll be doing face painting and balloon twisting as well. So yep. that'll be. Yeah, fun. but that's that's dull next to that's this. I know. No, no, you got fire there. <laughs> but th those guys are awesome. Okay, next. Yep. yep. And yep. okay. Well, that's our logo. You can go Keep going. Yeah. 
And that is uh, Joel Tacey. He's a fellow that comes and does a lot of library programs. And he's going to have a thing called Nerf Gun Battles. So you can bring the oh, kids around. Oh, my God. And um, they all get these Nerf guns and stuff, and they shoot uh, n you know, Nerf bullets at each other and stuff. And, they're uh, soft. They're, they're soft, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're quiet, so people yes. can still read in the library. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Take the net and there. Oh, this is some of the. This is all retro stuff coming up here. So this is this is how far we've come. <laughs> a book, a bookmobile. Looks probably in the 50s there sometime. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot of people remember the bookmobile. They, yep. They yeah. have a very fond uh, love of. of you know, oh, it came to your going. neighborhood. Yep. 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 And oh, well, look at the, the there's the card catalog. The card catalog. That was the computer of old. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. And, and, and then the lady helping is a computer of old, too. We right. still have that one. Right. <laughs> but we right. don't use them. They're just for fun. Yeah. Right. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Those are some great pictures. Yeah. So uh, on Friday night, when we have the, um, the, the, the gala celebration in the, um, the convention center, we'll be, have, we'll be projecting on the wall a lot of these old photos and everything from different branches and stuff. So we're compiling that together. This was Garth Stein. He was the first speaker in our speaker series this mm -hmm. year. Right. He wrote The Art of Racing in the Rain. Uh, that, that show was almost pretty much sold out. We had yeah. almost 400 people there. Okay. He was great. He was very entertaining. And okay. uh, it was very special. That, Temp Temp Temple, Temple Grandin, Grandin was a sellout. And, and you were there, right? I, I, no, I, 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 I got out of town that day. But yeah, yeah, we were down at the East China Performing yeah. Arts Center. And She's great. She was fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, We've had many people ask us to get her back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But her schedule probably. Yes. Yeah. She's hard to do. Yeah. 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 And These are the, some happy attendees. Uh, yeah. They went to and see uh, Mr. Garstein. Yeah. Yep. And this is something that's uh, another event that's coming up. It's the last of our 100-year speaker series. And it's Gail Carson Levine who wrote Ella Enchanted. A, uh, from what I'm learning, it, it, it's quite a prized book amongst girls of a certain age. Uh, so did you read it when you were younger? No, or? it's a little after my time. Okay. I, I look a lot younger than I actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But um, You're 30 now, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, but she's doing a writer's workshop, which will be really fun because it's going to be basically in the round. We'll be able to see oh, a lot okay. of people, and she'll talk to them about writing and, and the creative process. And, and her movies or her books were also made into movies. So. Okay. Yeah, it was a Disney film, I think, mm -hmm. yep. Enchanted. So that's... October 26th there. And these are all yeah. free. All the events that we're talking about, it's all free. So okay. it kind of fits into our mission. But it kicks off with uh, September 30th, right? September 29th. 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 Yep. Yep. And uh, that's, that's the, the, at the big, at, I want to say McMorrin, but at the, the Blue Water Convention Center. Correct. Yes. And it's absolutely free. And there's uh, yes. food and beverage and, yes. and a great evening. So. Yep. Yeah. Also, I'd like to mention the speaker series, just so that everyone's aware, we have very generous uh, donors who sponsored our speakers this year, um, McDonald's, um, um, the Schultz family, McLaren Hospital, as well as um, um, North Star Bank. They, they helped us yeah. out a lot with um, getting us some funds to help us get these wonderful speakers and these authors to come. Yeah, in. those people wouldn't come. Uh, Inexpensively, no. and they've got the expenses yeah. to get here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And as a library, we do things very economically mm -hmm. and we're very careful with money, so we were able to make some good deals with these speakers, but um, without the sponsor's help, we wouldn't be able to put these. Okay. Um, and it allows us to on. put it on for free, right? And, and yes. so that fulfills our mission of you know, equal ac access to everything we do. So, so well, happy, from the community, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You guys Thank have done a great job of celebrating. And you do a marvelous job of running a, a library system. So thank we you thank so you so much. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, do we miss anything? I don't believe so. Okay. <laughs> good job as thank always. Thank you very much. Thank Michael, you. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. That's about it for uh, this edition of the Focus Program. Thanks very much for tuning in. Till next time, I'm Paul Dingman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.